Good afternoon. My name is Lyndon Tarver. I'm the president of the Monterey County branch of the NACP. Thank you for attending. The reason why we're here today is to talk about racial trauma. Robert Downs is all at one of the schools that we have experienced racial trauma of black students. We're here today with Mr. Bill Mason, the co-founder of the Village Project, to talk about racial trauma at the Anthony Kid has that's experienced here at Robert Downs Elementary School. Mr. Mason. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I would also like to thank everyone for being here. Uh, this show of support is really necessary. You know, uh, one of the things that we continue to hear is about is the myth of America's last hometown. Unless it's a, America's last hometown of racism. Because that's, that's what is embodied and embedded. here in a couple of roles. Um, obviously, I'm a life member of the uh, NAACP. I'm a past uh, president of the Monterey County branch of the NAACP. Uh, and, and I'm also uh, here because I worked, excuse me, I worked with um, uh, Mrs. Anthony's children, the children who were victimized and the children who were objects of, of the kind of behavior that led them to be traumatized uh, almost beyond belief. Um, so I'm here because I'm that therapist that worked with them. And I'm going to tell you, I'm 80 years old now, and uh, I'm a black male. These were young black males. When they were t they, when they were talking about and trying to talk their way through the trauma that they had faced, it actually brought up the fact that I'm 80 years old and I have been living with trauma, racist trauma for the past 80 years. So I'm trying to stay objective in this meeting because I really wanted to help uh, these youngsters heal. I uh, took some doing. Um, so as a therapist, I've worked with all three uh, of, of these young people. Um, Mrs. Uh, Anthony um, had gotten these uh, three uh, youngsters into a couple of our programs. One of which, of course, was therapy, but the other one was a program that we have called Killing Yankee which means uh, Warriors Camp, the Mossai word. And it's a, it's a uh, program that we have on Saturdays and it's for children of African ancestry. And I think one of the things that was helpful, you know, in maintaining uh, the resiliency uh, that these youngsters had, and, and youngsters this young shouldn't have to be concerned about resiliency, but they had to be. But this program, because when they came um, every Saturday, they came to a program where every single youngster in that program looked like them. That didn't happen over here. So um, so it continues to be uh, profoundly angering uh, for me uh, to think about what these young people had to go through. Um, I'll give you one example. I'm gonna try to make my, my speech a little short because uh, the mother is here and she has many things to say. But when we talk about trauma, we talk about racial trauma. Those of us who are in this profession refer to racial trauma as a beast unto itself. It's not like any other trauma. All traumas are bad, but there's nothing uh, that, e that can equate to, race, to racial trauma. And we had these youngsters at this young age having to endure that kind of trauma. And so, um, and I'll give you one example of how they get re-traumatized every day. See, coming to school is supposed to be a place where certainly you learn. Coming to school is supposed to be a place, you know, where, you know, it's, there's comradeship, um, there's also fun, supposedly, but it shouldn't be a place where you come to get traumatized, and especially based on race. But they did this every day. Every day they had to get up thinking, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell called Robert Down Elementary School. And just the idea that you have to gird yourself as a child to go to school is absolutely incredible. And so what happens is they, they get uh, re-traumatized when they get here, and then they get re-traumatized day after day, class period after class period after class period. 
I don't know how they did, but they did. They certainly made doing therapy with me, with them, a, a lot easier because of their resilience and because of their desire to absolutely all the time be the best that they could be. I'll give you one example of the kind of thing that they had to go through, and then I'll turn this over uh, to Mrs. Anthony. One of the uh, young, young men came to therapy and told me, I just had a terrible experience today and he looked strained and he looked worried and he looked tired. And he said that he was called into the principal's office. The principal told him, he said, you are a young black male. You will forever have a target on your back. And then there will be those who will question and wonder why you were even in this school in the first place. So what he explained to me was, uh, Mr. Mason, I kind of sat there waiting for him to, after he told me this, for him to then tell me how he and the school was going to protect me. Since I had a target on my back, and people were going to be letting me know that, uh, that I'm not wanted here, what is this principal and what is this school going to do to protect me? What the principal did was send him back to class. And this young man told me that he spent the rest of the day frightened and afraid. So, um, and so as a therapist, as the therapist that worked with these three young people, I absolutely, truly believe that there is an absolute onus on this school district to make Mrs. Anthony and her children whole. And I'll step back and allow Mrs. Anthony to possibly explain what that might mean. Good evening. My name is Valerie Anthony. I am the mother of three black boys who attended Robert Down Elementary School from August 2019 until I withdrew them in May of 2022 to homeschool. Whether it is a parent staring appallingly during morning drop off at the black family daring to attend a Pacific Grove school, or Robert Downs principal, Sean Keller, telling my seven-year-old son that as a young black man, there is a target on his back, and that there are people who believe he doesn't belong here. Racism in this district and on this peninsula does not beat around the bush, so neither will I. In March of 2023, I filed a complaint with the Monterey NAACP and the Pacific Grove Unified School District, documenting nearly two dozen racially charged incidents towards my children, and that was just a few. In an updated response sent to me on July 18, 2023, the PGUSD board informed me they had immediately retained an independent investigator to look into my claims. This letter went on to thank me for bringing my family's experiences with racism in their district to their attention. And quote, we were collectively shocked and disappointed to learn about them. What the PGUSD board did not divulge is that they would cherry pick which few of the nearly two dozen incidents the investigator would look into, allowing a serious complaint of racial discrimination, inequality, and psychological and emotional trauma to be conducted and completed without speaking to any of the witnesses I provided, nor does their final findings affect include the emails, the voice messages, or other documentation between myself and Robert Down Elementary leadership or staff, which I provided to support my complaint. Since PGUSD chose to dismiss our experiences, I am here to provide you with some of those facts. Facts, April 2020, during a COVID Zoom classroom session, I hear my second grade son's teacher say to him, tell your mom, Tell your mom to cut your hair. Not once did I hear any comments from this teacher. Towards any white student in her class 
whose hair had grown had also grown out longer due to a countywide COVID lockdown. Fact, April 2021, after school, my children
I need you to speak up. Our silence does not protect us. And it will never serve our children the way they deserve. And in closing, I read somewhere today, I'm not really sure where, where your interim superintendent, Josh Jorn, decided to, at the end um, of his conversation, he chose to say that this situation began with the children. No child is born racist. Not one child, not one of us standing here was born racist. Racism starts at home. And while we cannot control what happens at home, you better believe that every leader in a hall of any school in this country is responsible for what comes through these doors. This is a this is about a system, you know. And let us understand that. And I think that uh, Ms. Anthony pointed out real clearly and, 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 and correctly. Because for what happened at this school, whether it was with students referring to black students as, you know, today you're my slave, which I think it happened to one of uh, Ms. Anthony's children, where a student came came up and said, "Here, carry my books, because today you're my slave." You know that they they have to feel comfortable that they're in the right atmosphere, in the right environment to be able to do that. And then for staff, because I understand that there were staff around, and I'm sure that they'll say that they never heard any of this stuff, and they'll pretend that they didn't. But the fact that the staff never reacted, you know, also says something about the environment here. That, that, that what those kids did was okay as far as this, this, this school was concerned. But this is a systemic problem. So whether it's here at PCUSD, whether it's at Salinas and the, the Shaniqua doll, whether it's at uh, Carmel, a few years ago we had to go there because um, uh, white students were referring to biracial kids as half baboon. to exist 
or to paint or put a varnish on them. And the way that you change those systems is for all of you. Just like you showed up here today, and I'm so happy to see all of you. But let the powers that be see you. Let the powers that be see you at, uh, at City Hall, at City Government and stuff, you know. I wish Carmelita was still the mayor. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, they, you, you know, but they need to see you everywhere. You know, if there's a Chamber of Commerce meeting and stuff, you need to storm it and talk about this issue because this issue is central to the life of the community. And if, this, and if we allow this to go on the way it is now, what kind of life do we have? We have the kind of life that's been in existence here, you know, all of these, uh, all these decades. Myself with Monterey Peninsula College, African-American students. But you know what? The NAACP is not just this man that stands here today. He's local. We've got a region. We've got a state. We've got Congress in doing Panetta. Goes all the way to Washington. Six hundred thousand people, six hundred thousand Americans. Sir, that's not what we're talking about today, though. We're not talking about that today. We're gonna talk about that another time. You divide us if you want to. You divide us if you want to. Go to the floor. No, they're just power. You may remember that. To forest yeah. up until David Black, Avenue School. Black people could not buy property there. And, and one of one of my heroes. I'm not talking about I know, but that, but this goes back to them. I know, but it goes it certainly goes back to that. talk to the DA about it, right? The DA is not doing what he's supposed to do then. For those of us who are mothers of children who have color, when they experience racial trauma, we're encouraged to report it, and I think we do. But being public like this, Valerie, is so scary. Yes, it and is. And it risks, um, I have an N of one, I have one child, and it risks making him the spotlight and further targeting him. So as a therapist, that be are going to know that we can do anything to anybody and they're not going to go public. Okay? 
okay? That shields them, you know? And I think that there are ways, you know, to also shield your child. But if you don't do that, then your child is gonna go through this school district or any other school district continuing to face racism, discrimination, and trauma. Because at some point, people are gonna have to do put the stamp in you did. You know, is it scary? Yes, it is. You know, any time that you fight for rights and you try to correct wrongs in the society, it's scary. You know, it absolutely is. And they count on it. They count on it being scary. is that I organize with community. I organize with residents, our resident leaders. I organize with our youth and student leaders, and I organize with parent leaders. I have been organizing with um, non-black parents, moms specifically, of black children for a number of years now. And what I have found is that it is a very scary Road. Um, so specifically in Pacific Grove, I found that there are groups of moms who have black children who is experiencing racism, but they're not receiving the support from their, um, their white friends that have white children because they don't want to make, you know, any noise that's going to cause their children to have any kind of backlash from it. And they don't want to lose friends. And so just as Ms. Anthony mentioned, like silence is violence. And so because this has come public today in a public place, I'm going to call to action that all of you mothers and even fathers come together and organize. I can help you do it. I have a parent leader. I'm not gonna call her out right now um, <laughs> that I've been working with for a long time. And, and, and she, she's here today. Um, if she wants to, to come forth and, and say that she'll, she'll be, you know, that cohesiveness that we need to bring a group of parents and community that's supporting to support the movement that NAACP is going to lead in the racism issue that we have, please let me know um, today and I'll, I'll make some of those connections for you because that is where your power is going to come from in organizing together because one or two will be dismissed but if we all come this strong and like Mr. Mason said to every board meeting use your two three minute comment public comment period and state your concerns and your issues there's also been uh, a couple of trustees that have wanted to advocate you know that has been shut down by others so it, it goes from, you know, from the resident level all the way up to the elected level. But if, again, if we come together, this is not a moment, it's a movement. If we come together and we address this, that is the only way that we can make it go away. 